show. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Stash and Beard Show. I'm really disappointed that there's no producer cam to see your exciting finger points because can we get a listen? I know you have bad luck with t-shirts, but can huh? we get a finger point? A finger gun? Yeah, I'll work on it. All right. Anyway, we'll get into that later. <laughs> t-shirts go. I love that. You're like, hey, you guys work on it. Cool. All right, yeah, yeah. No, you didn't see me shake my head at the camera like. Oh shoot! Like, no. No. Fuck t-shirts. Goodness. Anyway. Welcome back to the Session Beard Show. I'm Austin Postolka. This is Alan. Pitt. What's up, guys? Uh, real quick plugs right now. You can always uh, find the show on YouTube. Uh, we drop. We might be changing up the schedule a little bit, but Wednesdays and Fridays for sure. We'll decide when the other shows come out. But also, uh, you can find our podcast, the entire week's worth of shows that drops every. You know, type of thing. Yeah. Um, other people with their their, you know, like when Tara walks in and she's like super goobery and like hands up type of thing i'll do that to like more so to mimic her yeah i'll i'll do it you match the person's energy yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but yeah. i mean i'm not just gonna like i'm not a finger gun i'm not gonna like you can't just like walk in but like oh finger like i have to yeah i have I to be it. there with you guys yeah. it's not something i'm just naturally gonna do yeah yeah i got that so i got it all right all right were you ready yeah <laughs> oh, let's go, ladies and gentlemen. And welcome back to the Stash and Beard Show. I'm Austin Pasolka. This is Alan Pill. What's up, guys? Uh, real quick plugs. We got to plug it. Uh, so, videos on the YouTube channel, the Actually Average YouTube channel, uh, which eventually will get some Actually Average content up, not just the Stash and Beard Show. Um, I promise. I promise. But, um, so, so be sure to subscribe, leave a comment. But also, podcasts. We podcast the entire week's worth of shows in a great podcast format. You can find that over on uh, Google Play, Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts. Leave a comment, leave a review. It really helps us out. Um, and links are down below for that. Now it's time for... Stop for a second. Finger guns. And restart. And finger guns! We're back. <laughs> and that's why I don't finger gun. What? That's what my finger guns sound like. Pew, 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 pew. Like, yeah. Eh. I couldn't even get my voice low eh. enough there to like the, to get the pew pew. Eh. See, I don't know what that was. This is your finger guns are just. Eh. Yeah. You gotta go strong. Gotta flex the flex the forearm muscle a little bit. There you go. Hey, and forearm muscle. Look at you. And we'll tie into and tie your in personal the... training. Absolutely. What's that muscle called? The forearm muscle. <laughs> this is the pronator and it's the supinate. It's the Popeye. Yeah. That's the Popeye. That's there right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you, before this, you gave me a ringing endorsement of you would hire me before so uh, you may want to be taking that away. Yeah. Um, but, so like Alan said, uh, I am kind of dipping my toes into the world of personal training. My brother Lucas uh, is, said, hey, bro. You know your shit. Could you write for me? Mm -hmm. Write workouts for me. Um, and it's something that I've looked, wanted to kind of get into because, you know, fitness has become really a big part of my life. So why not? That's, that's the next natural step with it. Um, and so you being someone who has been a personal trainer for how long at this point? Uh, I started when I was 20, so 18 years now. That's, listen, you got, a lot of, you got a lot of experience under your belt. For someone like me who is who has taken the time to learn about nutrition and learned about mm -hmm. uh, what has worked for me, you know, let's talk about what some of the what are some of the basics that not necessarily that you need to know, but like the some things that you wish you knew maybe when you were first getting into it, you know. So definitely. Well, now that I look more into what's what's um, when we start taking a look at what's wrong with the body. Mm -hmm. And so we can, we can assess that. I wish I had learned a little more into that. Mm -hmm. um, when, so the basics, like when I first started, like you, you, they were really big. The, the, the certification companies I went through were really big on like the Latin terms of muscles. Okay. And so for the certification, I learned the Latin terms of muscles. Come to find out, y'all didn't give a fuck Latin terms of muscles. Yeah. You would come to me and be like, what's this? And I'd be like, biceps, brachii. And you're like, motherfucker, what? And yeah. I'd be like, uh, your, your bicep. Oh. How do we get it bigger? Yeah, you know, that's that's all y'all gave a shit about. So um, real quick, but, uh, yeah. before you went in too far, so the certification process. Mm -hmm. Clearly, I'm not getting certified mm -hmm. for just to give my brother workouts. Yeah. Right? Is the certification necessary in your Dep mind? In, in my opinion, where are you going? 
You know, are mm -hmm. we are we trying to be a writer for a magazine? Are we trying to get into a college? Are we trying to get into something? You know, some something well known. You're pro probably, excuse me, going to need a degree. Sure. But for me, you wanted to come train here with me. Mm -hmm. I I don't require it. I don't think it's necessary, especially depending on your background. Mm -hmm. um, to me, personal training and coaching, you can read about it, but do you know how to do it? And what I mean is, you know, like come back to psychology. You can read about psychology, but do you know how to read somebody? Right. The book's not going to teach you that. Uh, real world applicability and application, stuff like that, uh, getting, getting to know you, getting to talk to you. That To me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to learn more from you talking to you than I am going to read about you. Know what I'm saying? Does that make yeah, sense? I think so. So, so yeah, yeah, yeah. when it comes, when I'm going to bring this back to the training world, I mean, I can read about squats. I can read about deadlifts. Do I know how to do them? Right. You know what I'm saying? Now, not only do I know how to do them, do I know how to get you to do them? I can read about them all day long. Mm -hmm. But if can I can't I watch go, you squat and yeah. say, I know what... I'm reading in the book what this book is saying, mm -hmm. and then I'm looking at you, and does this match up? And can I get you or myself to match up what I see here. Right. And when they're talking about how to do this and how to do that and what to look for and this and that, can I do that? Right. And so I, great, good job. You you read a book. Right. Can you now apply it? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what I was getting at, you know, psychology and stuff like that, like real world. And those people, and I, and I say that because I was a psychology major for a portion of time in college, mm -hmm. but like the book is telling you this, can I go and apply it? And right. so that's, that's a lot of that time is going to be experience. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm saying, you know, we make this joke about, oh, you know, you know, looking for new people must have 10 years experience. Like, motherfucker, like, <laughs> I'm 18. Like, yeah. that, you know, type of thing. So like in that type of stuff, you know, um, getting your feet wet, like what you're talking about, you're starting, you're starting with family and, you know, um, you're applying maybe some of what you have learned yourself, what you have done yourself and your uh, trial and error. Yeah. Did this work for you? And just because it didn't work for you, do I just nix it all together? Or can I get Lucas to do it? Can I get Alan to do it? Things like that. Right. Oh, okay, well, it didn't work for me, so you're learning from that. Mm -hmm. Why didn't it work for Austin? Why did it work for Lu uh, Lucas and stuff like that? So you're going to learn more of that in this world mm -hmm. through trial and error, actual tri trial and error, than, in my opinion, reading that book. And how much, and to that point, how much research have you done, whether it's watching videos of other coaches coaching or, mm -hmm. or um, you know, the, the bio lanes and the, you know, yeah. how, like how much time do you dedicate? I mean, at this point, you kind of know what what your go to is mm -hmm. like you, you. But leading up to that point, did you spend a lot of time in the film room of sorts, you know? So learning? it's funny because I, I tell you guys all the time about Westside, but like back when I was at Bally's 2007, 2008, mm -hmm. um, some of the old powerlifting watches and things like that, those are the magazines I used to read. But YouTube videos that would come out, things like that, websites, I tore into Westside mm -hmm. not knowing anything about gear. So I applied... Um, their percentages and their bands and their chains, like when they're briefing up and box squats, we yeah. did all that shit raw because I didn't know no better. Right. Their max effort stuff that I saw them doing was in gear and things like that. I didn't know no better. Yeah. So I was applying those um, those things that I was reading and doing them to us. Now, did we get stronger? Yeah, we got stronger. Right. But like, there's some things that you know maybe you know had I had gone to them or learned a, a little little more from them. But I was you know I just read it, I saw it, and I was like, oh, let's go. Let's go squat the way they are. Right. Let's go bench the way they are. Things like that, you know. Yeah. Um, so I had to learn real quick. Maybe a wide grip bench for a raw lifter wasn't for me. Why were those guys raw benching? Oh, okay, they're in shirts. Mm -hmm. So taking some of that, and there's absolutely wide grip benchers. There's wide stance raw squatters. So you know what I'm saying. But I was not a wide grip bencher. I was not a wide squatter. So I had to learn that, mm -hmm. you know. But I I I tore in. Um, I've got Dave Tate's um, his eight principles. I have that still on pink printer paper. I have the uh, original book of methods. I printed out that book, um, but that was more what I did. I read and I dug and I watched videos. So yeah, I have on Instagram a ton of people that I follow. I have on YouTube a ton of people that I follow, always getting alerts, always watching their stuff, dissecting it. Um, do I click with you? Do I like you? Mm -hmm. Can I listen to you? How you know? important is that? Like how it, 100%. As, as a as a client, hundred percent. You know, I may know all my shit, but if me and you don't have a great relationship, if you don't, if we, me and you don't click, we don't bond. If you don't like me, it doesn't matter if I know my shit. And I'm not saying, oh, we'll go to this person that doesn't fucking know nothing. But I've seen it time and again in gyms. It is about personalities. 
this lady over here may not know what I know, but her personality fit with you, and now you're getting better results because you two click. Right. So it is, you know, absolutely. Um, people that that I've I've watched and studied from that I just I wasn't grabbed by, but mm -hmm. then, you know, I listen to everybody else. I'm like, well, this motherfucker records and this not. I was like, that doesn't, you know, I I can't if I can't listen to you, I can't I can't watch you. Right. You know what I'm saying? I, I in my opinion, you know, I'd rather go to somebody that I vibe with, somebody that I click with. Um, you know that I'm going to be interested in and has and also grabs my attention to learn from. I'm going to learn more from that person than somebody that I just you know I'm irritated by. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Go back to college classes. Yeah, you know we all had our classes that we did really well in. We Absolutely. focused in, and then we had those other ones where I was like, I don't need to be here. Right. Why am I here? You know what I'm saying. Yeah. So I didn't learn Man, anything. Couldn't this have been an online? Yeah, I didn't. Time? I didn't learn anything. So the same thing in in, in the fitness industry. There are absolutely people. Um, now on the flip of that, there's people. You know, they're fucking, like, as far as, like, personalities where I'm like, fuck, yeah, this motherfucker's funny as fuck. Yeah. But I don't, I listen to his, his entertainment. I don't, I take what he or she says about training with a grain of salt because mm -hmm. I realize that they're just, they're they're an entertainer. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you do have those, especially now with Instagram influencers and YouTube uh, personalities and things like that. It's interesting so, you bring that up. So, like, the, so how do you not fall into fitness hoaxes? Because, yeah, you know... There are a lot of like there are a lot of diets and there's a lot of like Trainer. yeah Trainer. It, it really some is them, just you know some of them you you know from your own your own expertise you know from years of putting in work of planks and hanging leg raises right. and twists of sorts and farmers carries and things like that of of of, of core strength that this fucking machine that you bought at three o'clock in the fucking morning right. is not going to do the same thing, you know? And so either you've been burned before and you spent your money on the apparatus or you just know like, come on, man, like, you yeah. know, this isn't going to help me lose 10 pounds in a week, you know? Like, so right. you learn from some of that stuff. Um, just, um, like I was telling you right before we started this, a lot of what I do, I'll see, I'll read and I'm like, Hmm, what is this? And I'll research into it and I'll read it. And I'll like, man, this doesn't make any sense. Let's read more. Let's ask people, um, I've like I've been following this one guy for a little while now, and I've asked two or three different people who I hold in higher regard. Uh, hey, what do you think of this? What are your thoughts on this? And so I've asked them what their their thinking was, and I've been utilizing it now easily. I think for the last four four weeks, mm -hmm. um, is that enough time to sit here and be like, hey, you know, make or break? I don't think so. So I'm still employing it, right? But I'm seeing results. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, as far as right now, okay, four weeks in. Seeing results, could we be onto something? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Is it a hoax? I don't know yet. Um, I, we're literally going against everything I've always thought of full ranges of motions and bar has to touch here and hips below. But he's also talking from like an athletic standpoint, so and I can we can tag him in the video. Who is it? Um, you, you Dr. Had, Dr. Joel Seedman. Okay. Yeah, uh, he's he's Seedman. big right now. What? Seed. Seedman. Seedman. Um, he's big for athletic performance on 90 degree joint angles and stopping, uh -huh. so we don't go touch the chest. Um, but he also prefaces it that for powerlifters, you know, where we have to go full range to touch and uh, rules and such. So I've been employing a lot of his stuff lately, and now where I'm using some things uh, for some of my clients, seeing what they think, mm -hmm. getting feedback from them, mm -hmm. you know, and so far all positive. I haven't gotten anything negative from it, mm -hmm. uh, from my people or from myself. So I, I try it first on myself. I don't just go through and an Instagram guy says, you know, the fucking one arm push ups to save the day. Right. And I'm like, well, I can't one arm push up, but I'll write it for Austin. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'll guinea pick it, uh, guinea pig it first, mm -hmm. see it. What am I getting from it? And then I'll start employing it maybe, mm -hmm. you know, and that's, that's kind of what I do. You know, and then uh, I guess my next question is: Is com is complex better? Like, it, like so, any Joe schmo can come in and put thirty five or forty fives on on the bar, start bench pressing, and they're gonna get stronger, mm -hmm. even if they never put any more weight on. You know, the like if you kept it simple and said if you put weight on bar and do the motion, you will get stronger. Is adding the complexity the part that makes you a good personal trainer, or does the, or is there something to keeping it simple? Um, my my quick this answer. This is kind of a big question. Yeah, my, you know. my quick my quick answer to that is keep it simple, stupid. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in in terms of you know just the, say the barbell bench press, and that's all we're that's all we're going to talk about. That's all we have in our arsenal is the barbell bench press. Um, the simplest variation of the bench press for somebody new, mm -hmm. okay? Um, throwing in you who has never come to lift before and I already get into bands and chains and boards, why? 
I would much rather build a foundation and a base with you mm -hmm. on just the movement itself. So now we're going back to like when I was 16, you know, literally in college football or high school football, mm -hmm. four by 10. Yeah. Four by 10. And it was at a certain percent. So we did this percent this week. Then we went up 5%, 5%, 5%. We did this for fucking eight to 10 weeks. Then we retested. Yep. But it's always four by fucking 10. Yep. You know what I'm saying? We four did. by 10 at 50%, four by 10 at 55. And that was the, the overload method to get up to retesting week. Yep. We did bigger, faster, stronger. Five mm -hmm. by five for week one, five, four, three, two, one next. 10, 8, 6, and then 3 by 3. Like, it, it, it was clockwork. This yeah. is how we do it every single time. And yeah. and there's just that simple rep scheme. Yeah. Like, and can you get stronger on, on something simple like that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Can, can I get stronger by working up to a one rep max every single time? Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, there there's there's so many programs out there. It's how you utilize them. Um, so coming back to the West Side, a lot of the uh, – or conjugate, I should say, you know, West Side conjugate system – a lot of times when people say, oh, it didn't work for me, well, you didn't know how to employ it. Mm -hmm. You know, you get caught up in not knowing how to waive your percents and how to add your bands and how to add your chains and you don't know what speed is and all that type of stuff. Well, that's, is that is that Louis' fault or is that your fault? Right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he knows how to teach it. Now, if he has taught you it and he didn't teach it to you well, then I could say that was Louis' fault. Sure. But if you didn't grasp it and you didn't employ it the correct way, that's on you. Mm -hmm. It's not the system's fault. Um, can you get stronger on five thin one? Yes. Mm -hmm. Can you get stronger on jugger cube? Yes. You know, um, knowing, knowing what the plan is, knowing what the, um, what the program, all that stuff and how to employ it correctly and do it correctly. If the motherfucker tells you, you got three exercises, four by tens, mm -hmm. do four by tens. Listen to the program. Mm -hmm. It is right, the four by 10 isn't Louie, but uh, we'll call it Alan's method. Sure. Alan wrote you and told you to do four by 10. Well, you were feeling froggy and decided to do another set to failure. And then also add in this because you saw that plyometrics, you know, would make you this and that. And you're like, oh, well, I also want to throw in some current. It's no longer Alan's plan. Right. But at the end of it, you're going to be like, well, Alan, your plan didn't work. Right. No, motherfucker, because you didn't follow what the fuck I told you. You added shit. Yeah. So that's the other thing, you know, that, that people will do. Mm -hmm. um, that you've just changed up the, the whole outline of what we were doing. Right. Um, and that can make or break a program. But once again, that's not Alan's fault. Right. It's your fault. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You know what I'm saying? And as long as I also don't say, well, hey, man, the plyometrics really work. Glad I wrote them. And I'm not piggybacking off of that. Sure. You know, because that wasn't, that wasn't part of my plan. So as right. a coach as well, you know. So, so gonna, to kind of answer that, just keep it simple. Yeah. And, and you're going to grow. You're going to get stronger. Yeah. Um, the, another question that I have when it comes to programming, mm -hmm. so you write, at least for me, I don't know how, how you do with everyone else. You write pretty much day of, that's going to be my workout. Mm -hmm. And there are, there are clearly like written programs. Like I think Dan Bell has one or, or, uh, um, uh, I know Julius Maddox has one where it's an eight week bench press program mm -hmm. and you put in and it's going to be this, 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 this. For eight weeks, I can tell you what you're gonna do yeah. in two months from now. Where do you stand on on that? Because clearly, those work for yeah, people. Yeah. You know, like it, I'm not knocking those by any means, but so I I have always kind of written the way I do. Do I write people in advance? I, I have a couple I do. Mm -hmm. My my way of writing and programming the way I do it always has just kind of stemmed from um, you guys coming in that day and. I would write y'all's books mm -hmm. and I knew, okay, Austin's going to be here by nine. I knew I either had to have you written by the night before mm -hmm. or have you written in the morning when I got to the gym for you to show up at nine o'clock. Right. And that's just what worked with everybody. Yeah. And everybody that I have has, as far as I know, they haven't voiced it like, I fucking hate this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just the way that I did my programming. Um, the other way and the other reason I liked it was changing audibles. There might be something, if I wrote an entire press day. And things revolving around shoulders and triceps and push and pull, and you walk in in a shoulder sling. Well, yeah, you know a what I'm saying? So, yeah. so I, I also I would get critique from you like, hey dude, you know how you feeling? How was last night, man? I'm feeling great. Looking forward to press tomorrow. Okay, press day. So those types of things. Some of these, you know, when you write these programs, uh, a lot of and I, I can't speak for Maddox or Bell. I don't know their programs, sure. but a lot of these other programs that I used to follow, and I have them saved on my phone, were the same movements for four weeks. Yeah, uh, like I've done, I've so done we like would, we would the Jim Stepani yep. uh, program. Same, and it's, it's same, the same but thing. Old, old school flex from like when I used to train back in when I was 18, mm -hmm. you know, I'd, I'd open up the flex magazines and it was like, run this for, you know, eight weeks with bigger guns. Right. And every fucking week was the same fucking program. Right. 
as me using that program, I had to know, like, okay, it may still ask for by eight on barbell curls, but what did I do last week? Mm-hmm. I worked up to 135. Okay, let's try and get one set of eight at 140. Now I'm showing growth. It doesn't mean 135, four by eight, all eight fucking weeks. Right. Some people do fall into that. Some people get very bored. Pull downs again. Yeah. When I used to walk in with my boys at LA Fitness, they always want to bench press first. Yeah. You know, like, oh, you know, what do we want to do? It's always the fucking bench press. What's well, okay, but let's change it up. Like, oh, let's do this. No, this, this, and this. I'm like, fuck, man. Like, you don't want to incline first. Right. You don't want to floor press first. You don't want to throw some change in. So that's always why I kind of liked kanji. It was always changing. Yeah. You know, and I always like, where, where are you and I the weakest? Let's go do that variation. Right. Um, but, you know, do I have people um, who, so, and once again, so far, nobody's told me. I have had people tell me they like the variety, that it changes every single week, that it's not the same fucking workout. Yeah. You know, uh, the other side of that is, you know, am I writing a stock program? Um, if I'm just writing a stock program to sell for 30 bucks online, yeah, I'm going to write down bench press, flat bench, or right. flat dumbbell press, yeah. incline dumbbell press, push-ups, pull downs, Because those are all sit-ups. things that if you and walk into a gym, you should be able right. to do. But for you guys, your program is for you. Right. I don't, I don't charge you for an Austin program and then go give it to Jody. Right. Okay, because you're a you're paying me. Yeah. B, it's for you. Could Jody do your program? Yeah. Could Jody get stronger doing your program? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's it's for you. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I have written the exercises and I've put the stuff in specifically for you. Right. He could feed off of it, absolutely. Sure. But like, then he's gonna come to me and be like, "Why am I still fucking weak? Because right. I haven't hit any of your weak points. I'm just right. fucking hit all your strengths that were Austin's weak points. Right. If that makes sense. So I've yeah, just yeah. made you stronger at what you're great at. You still suck. And everything else, because I haven't, it's not for you type yeah. of thing. So that's the other reason, you know, um, the, the way I kind of write, you know, like it's about you. Yeah. So that that's more lending into what I do. And you'll, you, when you start writing for your brother, you'll get feedback. Yeah. You know, and where do I go from that? Uh, like you and I talked a couple weeks ago, like throwing audibles as well. Um, man, I came in, it was supposed to be deadlift day, but wanted to bench with Geo. So I fucking bench. Okay. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So learning how to throw audibles in because it was upper day and oh, I got a sling now. Okay. Well, guess what? One arm dumbbell bench, right? One arm, or, you know, one arm bicep curl, or you know, whatever I gotta, I gotta work with, um, and just the people that I've, I've met and gravitated towards me have been the same, the same way. Like, oh, they walk in, what are we doing today? Mm-hmm. Not saying they didn't have a set plan, like you know, back in the old school bodybuilding days, Monday was legs, Tuesday right. was bench, Thursday was back, you know, yeah. things like that. Um, just, it's just kind of the way I've attracted those people that fit with how I write and they've so far they've said been fine with it right you know so and then the uh, another question that immediately jumps to mind is do you write rest days in or do you like for me you say all right Austin when are you in I give you my schedule sort of thing but let's say it's someone it's like all right just write me whatever you write I'll do you what what are the importance of rest days and then cardio like you know so because good good questions um when you first come up to me and you're thinking of hiring me Mm -hmm. uh, i tell you how i write hey you know you're looking to get stronger doing this this is the method that i use and i used to i used to be like oh you know i'm a usapl lifter i'd like you to program in shaco and i'd say you know and i know shaco uh not personally um, small oven, I would be like, you know, no small oven, I could do that, you know what I'm saying? But then it was like, I don't, that's not how I write, mm-hmm. you know, I, 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 what I like. And so here's the other thing, uh, why am I going to write you a Shaco program if I'm doing West Side program? Why right. am I, why that's am I training question. you different? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that was really what my thing was. I always gravitated back towards conjugate stuff. Mm-hmm. So then I get to the point where, and now what I do is, all right, conjugate. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, you know, we, we variations, and depending on how new of a lifter, you may just back squat back. So talking about back to the bench press question, yeah. you may just be back squatting. Mm-hmm. You know, I change your rep schemes, and just the rep scheme changes enough. There's still enough stimulation to keep things different for you without bands and chains and uber conjugate. Right. But um, if I'm, if I'm, why am I training you in a way that I don't train myself? You know what I'm saying? Right. Yes, I've gone through all those methods, and I know about them, um, but I, I've always gravitated back to this, so why am I not gonna train you? Right. So I tell people, this is the system, and this is what we do, and these are the days. Does that work for you? Yeah. And I have a couple people whose days do, do change. Sure. Like instead of like Sunday, Monday, Thursday, Friday, I've got some Tuesday, Wednesday, yeah. uh, Friday, Saturdays, things like that, so that changes, but the idea of the lifts change the same, or uh, stays the same. But with that, to answer that, 
they kind of already have days programmed in as rest days. You know that you're not going to be lifting on Wednesdays because right. y'all write you for Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. So you know you got Wednesday off. Wednesday can be a rest day or Wednesday could be a lighter day where we get in and we do some things that we're going to be able to recover from but that hit on weaknesses. Sure. So like say if, you're, if your triceps are fucking shitty, yeah. you know, we come in here on your Wednesday, yeah. which uh, the way that I write is after Thursday or Tuesday for max effort day and we, we do some things for triceps that's not going to hinder us from Tuesday's workout and aren't going to hurt us for Friday's workout when I do right. dynamic effort upper. Right. So I, I do have off days already into the, the template, mm -hmm. but at the same time, you know, I have things to throw at you that, you know, you're still resting, kind of active rest type stuff. Sure. So what about cardio? Cardio. So what's, everybody's different. Um, what, you know, we do conditioning work. I like conditioning work. Conditioning work is done on your off days, yeah. but the definition of such, you know, like, uh, we, we talked about this, somebody had said, oh, we don't do cardio, this or that. Well, what we do for cardio is gonna be a little different. Right. You know, we may push sleds, uh, we may pull sleds, we may, you know, strongman type stuff, you know, um, conditioning work and things. Mm -hmm. So all that type of stuff we throw in um, to, um, to get conditioning up. Right. But it also fits the lifting, because generally we're, when you guys come to me was for powerlifting. Gotcha. So all that stuff is, is to bring more of this stuff up I'm not going to very rarely ever ask you guys 45 minutes on a treadmill, 45 right. minutes on a bike. Yeah. Um, it, it, it gravitates around your sport and, you know, the idea is to condition. You know, when we're talking back to um, wrestling, right. you know, are you going to make your kids get on a treadmill for 45 minutes or are we going to do things that are going to condition them for their sport? So now right. we're talking about specificity. Right. A um, little, little more different for us because we, we, we hit a lift that may should, should take 10 seconds and then we <laughs> sit down for fucking five minutes. Right. Can I program conditioning stuff in there? Like, yeah, I could have you on an assault bike for all out fucking 10 calorie or 10, sure. or 10, 10 second rip yeah. and then um, have you rest for five minutes and kind of get you the concept of... Yeah. getting into the squat or the deadlift type of thing um but you know that's you know generally not what i do so our conditioning yeah, sure. more more pulling sleds more farm or strongman type stuff things right. like that yeah. that are going to build your win build your gpp um all that type of stuff gotcha so all right so last thing but let's finish this up with what are your pro tips for beginning um uh, personal trainers like what are what give me the three Somebody things for you you want to yep yep so three things that are just hit tips pro just your pro tips you know what I mean like mm -hmm. uh, we'll see if I can get you three we'll let my mind rumble <laughs> but for somebody that's looking to get in the game and somebody that's looking to coach yeah absolutely know your basics mm -hmm. okay know how to teach the basics you know mm -hmm. and and know your sport what do you get into if you're you know what's your brother do so let's assume he's a wrestler yeah so you gotta you gotta have a back down in wrestling yeah so i would teach you you know know your basics for wrestling what's yeah. the sport of wrestling involved right and then second thing is what exercises would cover the basics of wrestling and i gotta know those basics right um so like with, I, I joke around because people come to me like, Alan, I want to know volleyball. I want to be a volleyball player. I'm like, I don't fucking know volleyball. <laughs> right, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But here's the funny thing about strength. Like strength, I can make you stronger for every sport. Right. The barbell knows no sport. So I can make a volleyball player. I can make a track runner. I can make a wrestler. We're all going to, we're all going to hit the barbell. Right, yeah, yeah. Uh, but then getting specific for their sport. So coming back to it, know your sport you need to train for. Know your athlete. Uh, know the basics of exercising to help him get stronger, but also they're gonna carry over to, um, um, to, to that person's sport. Sure. And I think lastly, you know, aside from knowing your athlete, know yourself, mm -hmm. you know, do you, do you have an understanding and a, and a grasp of, of everything and, and how, to, how to teach, how to coach, how to talk, yeah. how to listen? You know, um, and that might, just, that might actually be the very, very first important thing. Yeah. You know, you might know shit, but you're a horrible conveyor. Right. Okay. You're a horrible talker. You're a horrible. You're just. You're just a shitty person. And I, and I say that because I, I know people that are like that. They're fucking very smart. Right. But they're just rude motherfuckers. Yeah. So it's like I don't even. I don't even want to pick your brain because mm -hmm. you're rude as fuck. You right. know what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. So be be approachable. Be personable. You know. Be there able to teach. A, be able to listen. There's still a a. Uh, um, what's it called? Customer. Uh, yeah. Uh, the. What the fuck is that called? Customer service. Thank you. But yeah. You know, like, like, you know, like I said, like, customer service when you guys, when you guys hit me up and I don't care what, you know, you guys, oh, oh, oh y'all talk to me or whatever time of night. Yeah. But if I'm just like rude as fuck to y'all, like, 
You know what I mean? Like, yeah. do you really, you know, am I gonna? A, are we gonna be friends? But B, do you really, do you really want to put up with somebody that's just a, just a dick? Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's probably first. Yeah. Be, be, be able to teach what you read. Mm-hmm. You know, and then you know we'll go into point one and two, which now should now be two and three. Right. So be approachable, mm-hmm. be personable, be likable. Yeah. Be able to teach. And here's the other thing, like. I'm, I may I may be a hands-on guy, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, Lucas may be a hey, I can send you a video, and he can be a visual guy. Right. You might just have to fucking put my hand here and put my hand here and be like, motherfucker, this is hand grip. Right. I may be able to write Lucas and be like, hand grip equals. Right. You know, time that he might learn that way. So knowing yeah. knowing how your people um, learn right. also opens up your business space. Yeah. If I'm only a an audible coach right. and I don't know how to hands-on or I don't know how to to write or send things, and I'm just like, hey, listen to my words. Yeah. I'm um, canceling out potential business. So when right. I start thinking about, because this is sometimes, it is, it is a business. Sure. So I got to be able to, you know, do I just want audible clients or do I want, um, you know, do I want to build my base and I have to, you know, different ways of thinking. So, you know, uh, those those are my three things I would tell you. Know Absolutely. your basics of, of your athlete. Know yourself. Know how to, know how to speak and, and approach your, your athlete and your client. And also know the basics of lifting to apply to the basics of that person's sport. Absolutely. So that's what I tell you to do. Beautiful. Yeah, man. If uh, you have any more questions for us, you can hit me up on uh, Instagram and t- and Twitter at. Uh, you can hit me up. On t- <laughs> uh, it's been a long day. Twitter and Instagram at Radio Guy Austin. TikTok is at Actually Average. We do respond to DMs if you send it our way. So be sure to uh, uh, hit us up there. I promise I haven't been drinking yet. He's lying. <laughs> Motherfucker, it's 10 o'clock in the morning. I can't That's be perfect drinking. perfect time. Yeah. Woo! Alan. Where at can Alan they Billy. Find yeah. And uh, at Lady Juice Beard Oil. Uh, either of those, hit us up. Questions, anytime, anything. Um, text, hit those two things up. We're open to C- CTX Barbell Orlando. Um, also on Instagram. Yeah. I don't know why I never tagged that motherfucker. Uh, well, not one time. Yeah. Weird. Anyway, any fitness related, hit me up at Alan Pilly, CTX Barbell Orlando, uh, Lady Juice Beard Oil. I answer everything. Hit us up, ask away. Let's get you, uh, let's get you guys helped out. Whatever y'all need. Absolutely. Uh, that's gonna do it for this week's episode. Subscribe, like the video, uh, leave a review if it's a podcast format. Thank you so much for joining us. This is Stash and Beard Show. We'll see you next week. Later, motherfuckers. I think Jody had to take a shit. (laughs) Please, let's keep that on camera. Absolutely.